China has been stockpiling grain. The breadbasket of Europe is embroiled in war, and the US president just indicated that there would be food shortages, while the UN is predicting famine for many impoverished countries around the world. But how real is the threat? Today we're going to talk about the factors that are contributing to the coming food crisis and what you can do to prepare for it. So let's get to it. Food is the ultimate commodity. It was the first and possibly the last currency humankind will utilize. Remember that Einstein said World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones, and I would add that the currency they will use will be food. All the gold in the world is worthless if there's no food to exchange it for. Next to water, it's the most fundamental of human needs. So much so that the phrase nine meals to anarchy has become a common expression amongst preparedness circles. When people get hungry, everything else takes the back seat. Riots ensue, regimes are toppled, and wars are waged. Currently, the world produces enough food to feed around 10 billion people. That doesn't, however, mean we can actually reliably feed 10 billion people. This massive surplus is in some cases required to ensure that the just-in-time global supply chain has enough leeway to function without causing a Malthusian catastrophe. Thomas Malthus postulated that population growth is potentially exponential, while the growth of the food supply or other resources is linear. This eventually reduces living standards to the point of triggering a massive population die-off something we haven't seen in the modern age. Technology and the green revolution has held the force of nature at bay and fostered near exponential growth of the food supply to match our population growth, but the system is on the brink of collapse. Much is lost in processing, transport, and commercial and individual waste. The surplus is required to make up for the globalized system's lack of resilience and the bottlenecks that can occur throughout the supply chain. So make no mistake, when it comes to feeding the world's population, we are on a razor's edge. We are but one blight, one war, one kink in the global supply chain away from economic hardship, civil unrest, and famine. This is about to play out in 2022. Let's talk about some of the factors that are contributing to food inflation and shortages, and stay tuned toward the end of the video for recommendations for long-term food storage. Many of the Ukrainian farmers who produce a significant amount of the world's wheat are now fighting Russians who also produce a significant amount of the world's food. Ukraine and Russia combined produce 30% of the world's wheat supply, 20% of its corn, and 75-80% to of its sunflower seed oil. And the World Food Program buys 50% of its grain from Ukraine. According to the UN, if famines in developing countries are neglected, you'll have massive civil unrest, war, and massive immigration into Europe and other regions. And any country that continues to rely on Russia's resource wealth may be subject themselves to more sanctions from NATO. This is going to increase geopolitical tension around the world, expedite the East vs. West decoupling, and increase the risk of World War III. As you can see, prices of all of these basic staple commodities have been rising. In the West and more developed countries, this will translate into much higher food prices. However, in developing countries, this is going to mean famine and mass starvation. To top it all off, other global trade issues and supply chain bottlenecks, including the insanely high shipping costs that have in some cases gone up 800%, are pouring fuel on the fire. Around 2.7 billion people in the world struggle with water scarcity. Whether it's California, which is the main producer of fruits and vegetables for all of North America, or the Nile River that supports nearly 100 million people, or even the great aquifers of the Midwest, which irrigate the staple crops that feed the rest of the world, everything, everywhere, is drying up. The water in the interiors of the continents is siphoned for agriculture, which is then shipped off to places of high population density on the coastal regions. Perhaps not so coincidentally, these coastal regions are becoming wetter, succumbing to more intensive storms and enduring more unprecedented flooding events. Meanwhile, the interior regions of many nations are struggling with the worst droughts that they've ever experienced. The wells are drying up, and this is causing some countries to turn to something called desalination. But the problem with desalination is that it requires immense amounts of energy, usually in the form of oil, 
and it pumps all that brine or salt back into the oceans, increasing ocean salinity and further disrupting the finely tuned ecological balance that sustains life. This is going to end in disaster. Egypt will likely be one of the biggest tragedies. What once was the cradle of civilization may well become its grave. Every drop of the Nile River has been exploited in order to feed a growing population of people who are already the world's largest importers of food. Many analysts speculate that it's only a matter of time before countries that rely on the Nile River system not only for water but also to generate electricity will go to war over this precious resource. And to make matters worse, Egypt currently gets 85% of its grain from Ukraine. Recall that after the last global economic crisis in 2008, when we've seen food prices rise to levels that are even lower than that of today, Egypt had widespread civil unrest and regime change. But what's coming may well be much worse. Shortages in labor as a result of the pandemic and other socioeconomic and demographic factors have had negative impacts in the production, manufacturing, and distribution of food. Not enough farmhands to sow or harvest the crops, not enough people to work in the factories, not enough drivers to transport the food. This in part is the result of an aging population in Western countries who also happen to be net exporters of food. Labor shortages are also, of course, the result of the ongoing lockdowns related to the pandemic in China. Although China is not a primary food exporter, they do produce many of the things required for food production and distribution. Another factor is the increased urbanization that has resulted from a shift from farm to city life. A great example of this is the country of Japan, where the number of farmers is only a third of what it was in 1980, and it's been reduced by 20% in the last five years alone. Add to that Japan's demographic problems of an aging population, and you could see that this is a disaster waiting to happen. Some of this labor loss is offset by the advancements in agricultural technology. Unfortunately, not enough of it. According to agribusiness experts, people is the number one issue facing agriculture. Another major factor is the price of fertilizer. In a world where the soils are pushed to their limits with monoculture to feed the world's 8 billion strong and growing population, Decoupling of East vs. West will create problems for many Western farmers and add to the exponential increase in fertilizer price. For perspective, in some cases, fertilizer prices are up nearly 500% from just a couple years ago. Potash, phosphate, nitrogen, and ammonia are all at their all-time highs. There's also the problem of propane shortage. Many farms are located in remote rural areas without having access to natural gas and thus some 80% of grain dryers in the US, for example, rely on propane as fuel. You can see by this graph that the price of propane is also skyrocketing. The price of oil has skyrocketed as well since the pandemic, and this is used at every stage throughout the agricultural process and to distribute the food to the stores to the people. Any increase in oil price has a one-to-one -one relationship with the increase in the price of food. Another commodity that's directly related to the war in Ukraine is natural gas. The price of natural gas in Europe has skyrocketed. This is a major input to modern agriculture. It provides the function of powering everything from machines, to heating farm buildings, to making fertilizer, irrigating crops, heating greenhouses, and even drying grains. With Russia being the largest exporter of natural gas, this has created great uncertainty in the energy market as a whole. Another drastic increase is the price of diesel. Diesel, of course, is used in numerous types of farm equipment. That is, if you can get farm equipment in the first place. Farm equipment is prone to breakdown due to the rigorous nature of the work, and the pandemic has caused a major slowdown in the industrial production of farm equipment, and now it's taking longer to get parts and new equipment. This is compounded by ongoing chip and labor shortages. So as you're starting to see, every input into the agricultural supply chain is under pressure right now. You're even seeing a drastic increase in the price of herbicide. The price of herbicide has almost tripled over the past couple years. Increased reliance on herbicides when paired with GMO Roundup Ready crops has laid the foundation for a potential ecological disaster of apocalyptic proportions. 
when paired with our monocultural growing practices, one of these days a super weed is going to emerge that's going to be resistant to these herbicides and it's going to create a lot of problems for farmers. In addition to that, the price of pesticides is going up. Glufosinate is a common pesticide. You can see that the price of this chemical has nearly tripled over the past couple years. Pests are one of the major challenges that farmers have to contend with. For example, farmers in South Africa are enduring one of the worst locust plagues in history. And for the last couple years, locust swarms have been ravaging Sub-Saharan Africa. Many of these farmers have just emerged from a seven-year drought, and the first available fodder in years is now being devoured by locusts. This, of course, requires the excessive spraying of poisonous pesticides and insecticides. This is going to further contaminate the landscape and possibly even work its way into poor health outcomes and likely kill a lot of positive insects like pollinators in the process. The Australian mice infestation, among many other plagues, have the potential to put immense stress on the global food supply in the coming years. Between monoculture and a reduction in biodiversity, this has led to an increased risk of blight and disease. Species with less genetic variants are at a greater risk of succumbing to infectious disease. In creating genetically identical fields of wheat, we've abandoned thousands of highly adaptive and resilient varieties in the process. Far too often these valuable traits get lost, and this is why we have a doomsday seed vault. So despite its many achievements, the Green Revolution locked us into an unsustainable system, and without crop diversity, we will not break out of it. We haven't even touched on the issue of things like bird flu and disease which force mass cullings of animals, which has dire economic consequences and can even cause human diseases. And don't get us started on antibiotic resistance and the coming superbugs. Even the price of packaging and preservatives are increasing. Supply chain disruptions continue to affect the food and packaging industry. We're seeing limited supplies of things like glass, container board, cardboard and aluminum. To add to the problem, an intense demand for corrugate and cardboard and paper are also exacerbating these problems. This is largely due to the fact that we're seeing increased shipping activity from e-commerce retailers. We haven't even touched on the issue of climate fluctuations. Abnormal fluctuations due to a wavier jet stream which is induced by abnormal warming of the poles has led to wild weather extremes and altering the growing seasons. It's changing ocean currents, causing forest fires, creating unprecedented flooding events, and massive drought will quite possibly be the nail in the coffin of our global food supply chain. Right now there are an innumerable amount of negative factors which are driving the price of food sky high. And this is not going to get better in the immediate future. In fact, it's going to get a lot worse, which is why you need to prepare for it. To prepare for food scarcity, we advise people to do the following. And please, go and check out our library of videos on this topic so that you can start building a working pantry and a common sense surplus food supply. Stockpile seeds, plant a garden, purchase surplus non-perishable food items and start a working pantry. Remember that expiration dates are suggestions. In most cases, these are not even required by law. Buy things in bulk and go to wholesale stores. Things are much cheaper there. It's a bigger upfront investment but you're gonna save more money in the end. Check out our video on long-term food storage here, where we show you how to do this. Lastly, I would encourage people to invest in either a canning system or a freeze drying system. These can be expensive pieces of equipment, but can help you preserve food well into the future. This is also going to help you to beat food inflation. Let us know how you're preparing for the coming food crisis in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.